Sometimes the things you see in the shadows are more than just shadows. I used to live in a haunted house. In fact, we were in a book called the Pinoco Ghost Book. A huge family was massacred by the Indians, and their souls are still wandering. We had many, many experiences with the children of the family. We started using a Ouija board, and I found a spirit, a little boy, who was killed with an axe by a man he thought was his father. A few years later, I decided to use my board again. The spirit located me again and led me to his grave. Interestingly enough, on the gravestone was a carving of a little boy with a man behind him, and behind the man, an Indian with what was probably their version of an axe back then. I believe the Indian killed the boy, but the boy thought it was his father. When I reported back to him, he seemed to be at peace with this information, and I have never heard from him since. I've communicated with spirits for years, but this was the first interactive type of experience I ever had. A friend had a blind dinner date at a guy's apartment and was afraid to go alone, so she roped me into coming along and being set up with his roomie. After dinner, they wanted to play with their Ouija. I refused. It was exactly nine months from the day my father had died, and I was feeling pretty out of it. I was wearing jewelry he'd given me, as well as one of his t-shirts and one of his sweaters to feel closer to him. The room was dark, and I began to feel as if the oxygen was leaving the room. They asked the Ouija who it wanted to speak to, and it began to spell out my childhood nickname. Cheryl didn't know it because she was a fairly new friend. She'd never even known my dad. I made a noise and said, no, then told Cheryl I wanted to leave right then and there. They asked who it was, and it spelt my father's name. And again, no one there knew it. I got upset and said I knew it was lying. The candles blew out and Cheryl screamed because she said she could not move her hands off of the pointer, and neither could the boys. They were dumbfounded. I began to be choked by an invisible entity, and I was writhing on the floor and calling for my dad to help me. Meanwhile, our friend had been sent to pick us up at 8pm for us to go out with him. He heard us screaming. He came in, and everything seemed to rush out of the room. He dragged me out and locked me in the car and then went back in for Cheryl. We never spoke of it again. The guys tried to call us and apologize and get us to talk about the incident. We told them to leave us alone. I feel very strange telling you this, but this was an incident that happened two years ago and still leaves me perplexed. My best friend and I had been using a Ouija for four years before this happened. We usually contacted the same spirits who claimed that they had been our soulmates in many lives. Because of this, they tended to get a little overprotective, moody, and act like typical guys when it comes to real men in my life. Usually, they would claim that if I liked a guy, it was because he was an incarnate of one of them. But with one particular boyfriend, the spirits had a big problem. On many occasions, Ervim, the most protective of the spirits, told me I had to break up with my boyfriend, that he was a demonic sort of spirit that would do eternal harm to mine. I ignored Ervim, saying that I couldn't break off a perfectly good relationship based on the jealousy of a spirit, but Ervim persisted. One day, he asked me to look at my drawing pad. I looked and found that one page in my new book had become wet and had dried, leaving behind traces of a yellowish substance. Upon tracing lines around the yellow impressions, I realized he had left me a note written in the angelic alphabet, as seen in Buckland's book. 
I went home and translated the alphabet, and it read, Beware, bats. That phrase meant nothing to my best friend, but it did mean something to me. My boyfriend, the very one Ervim was warning me about, was an avid collector of bat paraphernalia, and even had a bat tattooed on his back. The really creepy thing about all this is that I finally did break up with my boyfriend because he told me that he believed he was a fallen angel and that he could produce an ethereal alter ego to avenge his sorrows. The point is that my boyfriend did turn out to be psychotic, if not demonic, and Ervim had given me the physical proof to believe so. No one but myself, in my immediate circle, is familiar with the angelic alphabet. No one knew about the bats. No one had a chance to draw in my art book. And with what? I am in my late thirties, and now living in Massachusetts where I grew up. I was a middle child of five in a very close family. When we were really young, my two younger sisters and I were always fascinated with the unknown. We would look in the obituaries in the newspaper to see who had recently passed away, and we would have seances in our garage with some other local neighborhood kids. Usually nothing would happen, but a couple of times, some weird things happened that we just could not explain. When my sisters and I were in high school, we learned about Ouija boards. We bought one, and began to play with it. Two of us would get on it, and the other would write everything down. At first it was fun. We talked to several different spirits that told us where they were from and about their families. This went on for weeks. Then, gradually, things started getting a little scary. Eventually, every time we got on the board, the same spirit would come on, who was not very nice. He told us he was the devil, and he was going to get us somehow. He called himself Zozo. When a friend of ours confronted our priest about this name, he got very angry and told us we should not be playing with Ouija boards. They were not toys, and we could get into trouble. He gave his Sunday sermon on the subject. Needless to say, we stopped playing with it. While still in high school, one of my sister's best friends lost her sister in a van accident. She and her sister were very close. She knew of our adventures with our Ouija board and begged my sister to let her come over and use it to talk to her deceased sister. Hesitantly, my sister sat down with her and contacted her sister with the board. Her friend bawled and told her sister how much she loved her and missed her. She didn't want to live anymore without her, and wished she could be with her. About two weeks later, my sister's friend died. In a van accident. Exactly the way that her sister had died. My sister took the Ouija board and put it out with the trash. And none of us has touched one since. One night, my brother and I were playing with my new Ouija board, and it didn't take long for the entity to come. As soon as it was there, I felt this strange feeling come over me. It felt as if something was inside of me. It got hard for me to breathe, but I didn't say anything. We asked the entity if it was good or evil, and it spelt out, Evil. Right then, I knew something was wrong because the entity was getting upset. It got harder and harder for me to breathe, until finally it felt like something pushed me, and it was over. Ever since that night, strange things have been happening in my home. Doors shut by themselves. I hear strange noises and see shadows in the middle of the night. Although this experience scared me, I still bring out my Ouija and talk to entities, even the upset ones. I ask them what their problem is, and see if there's anything I can do to help. I just hope I never run into that same entity that tried to choke me.
About 20 years ago, my friend and I decided to start playing around with the Ouija board I received for Christmas. In the interest of fair play, we did it as the box suggested, sitting on chairs facing each other with the board on our knees. We closed our eyes and had my sister act as secretary, recording each letter. My sister was about 13 and was not making anything up as different friends also stood in for her when she wasn't around. Within minutes, we began to receive sentences that made sense. Eventually, the board told us we were communicating with someone named Sevatu. He said he was an Incan warrior and that he wanted to talk to us. My friend and I became addicted to this game, and for weeks we would sit in my room, light incense, smoke cigarettes, and have sessions. Savatu would tell us jokes and ask us questions. After a few weeks, the nature of the messages changed. They became somewhat intimate, menacing, and rude. One night, Savatu told us he wanted us to come away with him. During that same session, the pointer flew out of our hands and hit the wall. At that point, we got freaked out and decided to put the Ouija away for a while. I began having nightmares, and so did my friend. I took to sleeping with a crucifix on and a Bible in bed with me. I began to fear the Ouija board, and my friend said she would take it to her boyfriend's house because he wanted to mess around with it. She was driving out to his house with the board on the seat beside her and her car began to smoke and stalled on a dirt road. She got out of the car and threw the Ouija board into a cornfield, then got back in the car. It started, and she drove safely to his house. I was very fearful for about a year or so afterward that I was being haunted, but eventually the fear went away. I have never again touched a Ouija, and do not intend to. Me and my friends Selena and Martha, Selena's sister Jasmine, and our common friend Emma, we are five in a group. One night at 7.30 p.m., we all decided to have a party at my house. My parents had gone out for an important meeting and would not return until the next day. All of us had decided to have fun. Martha had brought a Ouija board along with her. I asked her, why have you brought this with you? To which she replied, We must include them in our party as well. We partied hard, and then at 12 a.m., we decided to play with the Ouija board. We placed the board on a table and lighted some candles. Selena started the session. Is anyone there who would like to communicate with us? Selena asked. There was no reply. Selena spoke again. Don't hesitate to talk. Again, there was no reply. We got bored after asking 21 times and decided to watch TV instead. As the girls had to stay in my house for the night, they went to change their clothes. When it was finally Martha's turn to change, she went to the washroom. Suddenly, we heard Martha scream and we rushed to see what had happened. Martha was crying and she said, I just now saw myself walking across the washroom. At first we didn't understand what she meant, and we thought that she was trying to scare us. But then she showed us a scratch mark on her arm, which was not possible for her to make. We then thought to ask the Ouija board again. This time I decided to ask the questions. If anybody is here, please tell us. Is anybody there? Strangely, this time the board decided to answer back. Yes. Who are you? The board pointed to the letter D. D who? The board slowly spelt out the word death. What do you want from us? Blood. Your flesh as well. The board answered. 
and this was enough for us. We all left everything and ran towards the door, but the door did not open, and we realized that we had been locked in in my own house. Some more supernatural things started happening. The lights were flickering, and things were being thrown here and there. We somehow managed to hide in one of the rooms, but to no avail. Martha got very angry, and she asked with a loud scream, Why don't you leave us alone? To which the Ouija replied, Your screams make me powerful. Selina, in frustration, burned the Ouija board with a gas cylinder. The moment the Ouija board was burned, the front door opened with a loud noise, and without wasting any time, we ran out of the house. But the thing that happened after that is the most horrible part of the story. We all got out, but when Martha was about to step out the door, the door slammed shut. For a second, everything was dead silent, but after that, we heard her screams from the inside. We banged on the door and called out her name. After some time, our neighbors came and we managed to break down the door. We found Martha lying unconscious on the floor. We took her to a hospital. After that day, Martha never spoke a word again. Later, we found that the spirit whom we had called through the Ouija board was David, who was Selena's half-brother. He died due to an accident. David was never good when he was alive. Or dead. Martha was admitted to an insane asylum, and even today we don't know what exactly happened on that night. But whenever I look into her eyes, I get shivers all around my body, and I feel something horrible had happened. My family and I ended up moving from that house. Looking back, I have to ask myself the question, why did we do that? Because all of our lives have changed. I still feel a bad presence around me. I have been connected with a spirit named D in the past. He said he was trying to hurt me, and that he was evil. Ever since I was done with that session, every spirit after that wanted to escape my board by attempting to count down through the numbers and going to corners of the board and spelling out. I earlier today scanned my Ouija board and the letter D was scratched into it. I still decided to play and connected with a spirit named C who claimed he was good and he warned me and my friend that D was around and he wanted to harm us. C also said that he connected with us to protect us. We thanked him for the information and closed the session. Later that night, we again attempted to play. We once again connected with C and he said that prayer will make D more mad and my friend asked if D was around us and C spelt out R-U-N. Run. We quickly closed the board and ran to our friend's house who closed the portal. To close this portal, we had to play once again. Our friend, Andrew, asked the questions and we were the players. The spirit that connected with us once again was C. He said that D wanted out and that he will possibly try to make him stay in the portal longer. We put it to goodbye, and I am saying goodbye to my Ouija board this night. Whoever says it isn't real, needs to experience it for themselves. I always started with a prayer and the burning of a sage. There is a possible chance of playing it and having something dangerous happening. I need to know if anyone else has connected with a spirit named D. I have had three encounters with Zozo. The first time I ever played with a Ouija board, I had not heard about Zozo, and I wanted to prove that Ouija boards were fake. So I said, 
Are there any spirits willing to communicate? And the planchette moved to yes. So I then asked for its name, and it spelt Zozo. So I said goodbye. A year later, I told my friends about it, and they said they wanted to do it. So we all did. Once we started the session, I asked the same question. Are there any spirits willing to communicate? Again, the planchette moved to yes. So I then asked, Are you from the sun or the moon? And the planchette went to moon. We then asked, What's your name? And it spelt out, Zozo. I was going to say goodbye, but then my friends asked, Are you going to hurt us? And Zozo said, Yes. We all decided then to say goodbye. We decided to try it again the next day, and the same thing happened, except that time we said goodbye before going too far. Ever since beginning these sessions, some weird things have occurred in my house, but I still continue to play with the Ouija board. My siblings and I had an encounter with the paranormal through a Ouija board last year. My three older sisters, Sam, Karen, and Sarah, had come over that day to help me unpack in my new apartment, where, in a box, my grandmother had given me a glow-in-the-dark Ouija board. The girls were completely fascinated with the whole paranormal aspect, so they had invited my older brother to come around and play with us. We played for about an hour before I had decided to give up. We weren't getting anywhere, so what was the point? As I readied myself to move my hands away, the planchette started to go crazy, moving around in circles erratically. Whoa, my four siblings cried in unison. I sat still, completely in shock, and scared. I used to be a skeptic, until I realized something. It wasn't possible for all five of us to move the planchette in the same direction. Then, when it started to answer our questions, spelling out in full sentences, I realized this was truly happening. I simply asked in a meek voice, Who are you? Zozo, it replied. Nathan, our brother, almost cried from shock. He explained that he'd heard of Zozo and that he was apparently showing up all over the world. He was a demon. I told everyone we had to say goodbye, trusting my brother as he was almost never wrong. My sisters refused and started asking questions, like if anyone we knew was going to die. The board spelt out, Aurora. We had no idea who Aurora was, so they didn't panic, and started asking how this Aurora would die. Inside, Zozo spelt out. Inside what? The board started moving erratically then, spelling out my name over and over again. I finally convinced my sisters and brother to say goodbye. About four months later, I found out I was pregnant. I had forgotten all about my experience with Zozo. Finally, I had found happiness with my husband and my unborn child. Just as I went into labor, my midwife explained that my daughter, who I was going to call Aurora, didn't make it. She was born, stillborn. My precious little girl. I advise you to stay away from the Ouija board. I know that the mystery and disbelief can draw you in, but it isn't worth it. I paid for it in the worst possible way. So please, heed my warning. <laughs>